good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, we're going to start with this new session. Uh, this is the second session of this week number two. Um, we were talking about a grammatical topic yesterday. In this case, we're uh, talking about the use of uh, there is and there are. Um, we were like seeing what are the differences between the use of there is and there are. Uh, we were learning some rules that we need to, to put into practice when we're um when we are using this kind of topics. Uh, we had a lot of examples, or in this case, we. I already know how to use these expressions when we are uh, talking about countable and uncountable nouns. <clears throat> it is necessary that we can uh, like differentiate or make the differences between the um, countable and uncountable nouns because in this case, it is related to the use of different expressions um, in English. So in this case, we already um, notice something different between the words or the phrases with singular and plural nouns and also with a countable and uncountable nouns. And you know that there are like many clues or we have different things uh, on the sentences that we can like have this idea, ah, this is like a plural or singular, or this is talking about a count and uncountable nouns. But in this case, we were talking about the specific use of there is and there are in statements. And in this case, uh, we talk about the use of a positive and negative uh, forms. Ah, okay, don't worry. Um, and in this case, we saw the two different forms, the positive and negative, and also with some extra words that we can use to create statements. And also we were talking about questions because in the explanation, we have positive statements, negative statements, and also we saw the use of questions that I was saying that it is like, very easy to understand what is the structure of the questions because you have to place the word in a different uh, position. In this case, the word is or the verb to be, it's going to be at the beginning of the statement to create this kind of questions. But we also had different activities uh, related to the use of there is and there are. And in this case, we have here the document in which we have the activities. And in this one, we have the first and second activity. Let me see. The first one is an paragraph, a paragraph that is related to a house. And in this case, we are talking about a place, a specific place, and we were given uh, explanation or we are explaining the different things that this house contains. In this case, they are talking about um, the rooms, they are talking about the bedrooms, the different things that they have on the bedroom and all of these things. And in this case, it's positive statements or the use of positive words with there is and there are. In the second one, we have this that are 10 different statements, but in this case, they are negative statements. So in this case, we have positive and negative, and we are complete with this part. Now, we are going to continue with the third exercise. Vamos a continuar con el ejercicio número tres. 
That is this one. Describe your neighborhood. So we are talking about the place in which we are living. And you know that you have to think about the things that you can find on the neighborhood or in the place that, that you are living. And you are going to explain these th different things. You have two questions here. What is there in your neighborhood? And the second one, what doesn't exist? Entonces, tenemos dos cosas diferentes. ¿Qué es lo que hay en nuestro lugar de residencia? ¿Y qué es lo que no existe? Um, and in this case, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to rethink about the idea that you have about your neighborhood. Vamos a dar eh, un par de minutos para que ustedes vuelvan a hacer su eh, reconexión de ideas sobre eh, el lugar donde viven y luego vamos a empezar a ver quiénes van a ser las personas que van a estar dándonos la explicación. In this case, I'm going to do it like by a specific letter and then you are going to choose the next participant. Vamos a, podemos decir que es, vamos a rifar, ¿verdad? ¿Quién va a ser la primera persona en explicar o describir el lugar donde vive y luego ustedes van a ir escogiendo la siguiente persona para que pueda participar? So I'm going to give you, let me see, three minutes. Vamos a dar tres minutos para que eh, piensen en sus ideas y para que estén seguros de eh, qué es lo que van a explicar. Eight, ten, we are going to give the, um, the descriptions. A las ocho y diez damos nuestra descripción, empezamos con nuestra descripción y luego pasamos con la actividad cuatro. So let's make this explanation. Okay, we are going to begin. For this part, I'm going to choose based on a letter. And to make this more interesting, I'm going to use um, fictional characters. 
yesterday I was listening um a chapter of a, a book of Harry Potter. And there were like mm, at least 10, 10 or 12 um people on that uh, chapter. So I'm going to choose one of these uh, fictional characters and I'm going to use uh, the letter of their name to choose who is the person that is going to begin with this activity. Um, let me think about the people that were on that place on that chapter of Harry Potter. So in that case, we have... Um, let me see if I have the letters here. If not, I, I'm going to change the letter. Mm. Mm -mm. Oh, I have one. Yes, I'm going to use... I don't have any other letter here. Uh, it is the... Just one letter. Solo tengo una de las letras de eh, con la que comienzan los nombres de esos personajes que aparecían en ese capítulo. Porque, let me see. Mm -mm. There is not other word. I mean, there is not other letter here from the names. So I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use the letter M. So in this case, Marjorie, it's going to begin with this activity. Así que vamos a escuchar a Marjorie con la descripción de su lugar de residencia. So, let's begin. In my, na my neighborhood is quiet. Almost no noise is heard. The people are friendly. There are almost no shops. And the children are very respectful. Okay, very good. Excellent job. Now, tell me a name. Mm. Cindy. Okay, thank you, Cindy. Okay. What is there is your neighborhood? Uh, there is a main street there. There is a general parking lot. There are many people. There are many houses. What doesn't sit? There is not pool. There is not a skating rink. That's all. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Now, give me another name. Um, Patricia. Okay, thank you, Patricia. Okay. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. What is there in your neighborhood? Uh, in my neighborhood, there are many houses, trees, and there are a few dogs and cats, and there are not many children. Uh, there is a park nearby where you can exercise, and there is also a swimming pool and basketball and football court. And there are a pharmacies, restaurants, church, and supermarket. And what doesn't exist, um, it's not a movie theater. Uh, the closest one at 50 and 20 minutes in my neighborhood. Oh, very good, excellent job. So tell me another name. Okay, um, Pablo. Okay, thank you, Pablo. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Uh, ahorita es describir. Yes, oh, yes. Okay, describe. In my, in my, in my neighborhood, there is a small park. There is, can you play basketball? Oh, and football, um, sometimes tennis. Okay. In my neighborhood, there, there are many stores and crunch. There are, 
they are currently así es eh, um, construir ah buildings building Con, mm -hmm. ajá building new house and new street eh, that's all <laughs> okay thank you very good another name okay let me see Stephanie. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. Okay. But let me see, let me see, let me see. Ah, okay. In this case, Stephanie is not going to participate in this activity because she is going home right now. So we are going to let Stephanie do this um, or participate in the other activities because it is not like um, she can do it right now. So we have just Luis, if I'm not wrong. So we are going to give this time to Luis. Good night in my neighborhood. There are trees, there are many cars, many houses. There is a park where there are four parks. Uh, there are, uh, let me see, uh, like a gym. Uh, there is a, sorry for my, I'm sick. Uh, don't worry, is, don't worry. <laughs> uh, there, there is a gym, there is a, I, I don't remember, piscina. A Doesn't pool, exist. a pool. Yeah, yeah a pool. Uh, they are in a store. They are in um, we. Uh, they are in uh, like supermarket or something in many close to the my neighborhood. And that's it. Okay. Thank you. Excellent job. So. We have this um, description of the places in which we are living. So in this case, we can uh, think about different places or different um, physical spaces that we have on the city. And why are we talking about uh, the places in city or the places in town? Because we are going to listen in a couple of minutes a conversation that is related to this, this part. Um, Sometimes when we visit another uh, city, another town, or we are new in that place, we need to, to see every um, building, every uh, space that we have on that place, and we need to say the names. And it is necessary that we can um, like identify the different parts that we have on that place because it is necessary to give this kind of explanations with we are talking with someone else. Or maybe you are talking with someone new in the place and they are asking you uh, what kind of uh, places uh, this town have or if there are any store or if you have some supermarkets near the place or something like that. So, um. We have this activity done and we are going to continue no, with the no, eh, no, no, no. Yo de no. the written part. Vamos a, a pasar al siguiente, que es el número cuatro. That is activity four. But this one is something in which you are going to write statements. So in this case, activity four. Write sentences. Esa es la más sencilla. Vamos a escribir un par de oraciones. In this case, you are going to write two different sentences. One with positive use of there is and there are, and one with negative. There isn't, there aren't. Vamos a escribir nada más dos oraciones donde utilicemos el there is y el there are de forma positiva y de forma negativa. Y lo vamos a hacer en el chat. Acuérdense que le decía, tenemos tres skills, el reading, el speaking y el writing. Ya hicimos el reading con la parte 1 y 2, 
ya hicimos el speaking con este ejercicio y ahora vamos con el writing. Entonces, vamos a escribir oraciones de qué? Whatever you want. There is a small bird on my window. Um, there is a, what? A dog on the street. Whatever you want to write. But you are going to uh, write two different sentences. So in this case, it's two sentences per person. Dos oraciones por persona. And we are going to have the same amount on time. We are going to have five minutes. Cinco minutos y escribimos nuestra oración. Si ustedes lo tienen antes de los cinco minutos, empiecen a escribirlo en el chat y yo voy a ir pasando los, eh, las oraciones al documento. So, let's begin. Okay, in this case, with the link of the videos that we have on YouTube, um, I'm going to add the link at the beginning of this document. It's just one link because um, it is like a, a playlist in which you are going to find all of the all of the videos. So I'm going to write the link at the beginning of the document in which you can access to find all of the videos. And we are talking about the 16 uh, sessions that we are going to have.
Okay, I have uh, some uh, statements right here. I'm going to begin writing some of the um the sentences that you have on the chat. So we are going to make a list of sentences. So we are going to begin with the first ones. And if we can improve something, we are going to do it in that way. So don't worry about that. And we have the first one. There is a book. that I want you to read, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are dogs. There are dogs that can lead blind people, but give me a moment. I am kind of, I don't know, confusing. Mm. Mm. Okay, next one. There is one main street, okay? In this case, it is not necessary to add the article because in this case, we have a number. So it is not necessary to add the article. There is one main street. There are many dogs in my neighborhood, okay? There is not supermarket near my street, okay? In this case, we are going to add the word any because we are talking about that it is zero something. Next one, there are not many trees near my house. There are not many trees near my house. Let's see what else. There are many cars on the road, okay? There are many cars on the road. There is a supermarket. There is not any cinema.
There are not any shoe stores. Let's see what else. Ah, don't worry. Oh, but you uh, did a really good job with your uh, statements. They are uh, very good. There is one table in the classroom. In this case, you're going to use E when you are talking about the plural form. So in this case, it is not a woman, it's women. It's kind of different. There are good restaurants. Okay, sure. There are good restaurants. There ain't any beaches, okay. Any beaches. There is, let me see. There is a recipe that I wanted to prepare, okay. There is a recipe. To prepare. There are some eyes. That change color. Okay. There are three parts. Okay. There is a library. There, in, there is not any, oh, there is nothing like basketball in this case. There is not nothing. There is nothing like basketball. There is not, in this case, remember, you are using singular words. You are not going to use are. In this case, there is not any milk in the market or in this case, in the supermarket. There is not any milk in the supermarket. There is a bike outside. And I think we have the last two. There is a bike outside. And the last one, there are two ducks. And the lake, on the lake in this case. Okay, very good. So we have here, no, that is not. I don't want to make a comment right now. Okay, we have here the statements that you have created with there is and there are and there isn't and there aren't. Um, recuerden que es básicamente, ¿verdad? Las expresiones que utilizamos cuando estamos um, hablando de lugares o de cosas, en este caso con el uso del plural, del singular, nombres contables, nombres no contables. Y también veíamos uh, el uso de los negativos con este there is and there aren't. Básicamente, si nosotros lo traducimos o le hacemos la traducción es 
cuando nosotros queremos especificar que hay algo o que no hay nada de un objeto. So that's why we are using there is and there are. But if you cannot access to the, uh, the sessions, you have the link of the document on WhatsApp. So you can access to the document and you can see what is the information that you have on the document. So in that case, you are not going to feel like you are missing something. You can access to the document and you can read the information. And also, I'm going to add the link of the playlist of videos in which you can um, watch the sessions because there there is a playlist in which you can uh, watch all the all the sessions. So in this case, we are going to have just what six sessions that so you can like. Ah, and in that case, you have the numbers of the sessions on the uh, beginning of the video. So you can uh, look for the number of the session or the date and easy for you. So this is the last activity that we have for this topic. Este es la actividad número cuatro. Now we are going to go uh, to the platform. Let me see if I can access to the platform today. Oh, but in this case, I need to stop this one. I am not sharing the sound. Okay, we're going to listen to a conversation in this case related to places in town. And in this case, um, it's like the preview of the topic there is and there are. Estamos hablando de lugares en la ciudad o cómo podemos nosotros hablar con personas nuevas sobre lo que hay en nuestra ciudad. Ya luego vamos a ver un poco más del there is y there are, porque básicamente a eso se refiere. Then, we are going to listen to this conversation that is called I am your new neighbor. So, pay attention to the conversation and then we are going to say something about this conversation and we are going to see another video. So, let's pay attention. Welcome everybody to section 8. What's your neighborhood like? As we always do, we listen to a conversation in order to get ready for our topics, which will include places around town, location, and there is, there are. In this session, you will listen to a conversation between neighbors asking about places in town. Pay attention to there is, there are, one, any, and some. Excuse me, I'm your new neighbor, Jack. I just moved in. Oh. Yes. I'm looking for a grocery store. Are there any around here? Yes, there are some on Pine Street. Oh, good. And is there a laundromat near here? Well, I think there's one across from the shopping center. Thank you. By the way, there's a barber shop in the shopping center, too. A barber shop? You're here? Well, I... Okay, we have here a very short conversation between two people. In this case, we have a guy that is kind of young and we have an old lady. And in this case, maybe she has a lot of time living in that place and she knows a lot about the, the things that they have on that uh, like neighborhood. And he is going to live in that place, so he, he is new. And he wants to find different places on that town. And that's why we need to describe the things that we can find or the things that we can find in the place that we are living in this moment. Because um, we can find new uh, people that is going to live in this place. Maybe it is not like you are going to talk in English with that people, but who knows? You can have like a, an international a neighbor. So in this case, it is necessary that we can uh, have these ideas in mind. So in this case, Jack um, is looking for a grocery store and he makes this question. Are there any around here? Aquí está utilizando el any. In this case, it's related to the amounts of uh, stores that 
are in that place. La cantidad de lugares que hay ahí. ¿Hay alguna? Eh, básicamente eso es lo que, lo que pregunta. ¿Hay alguna tienda por acá? The, are there any? ¿O hay algunas tiendas cerca de acá? Yes, there are some. Yes, there are some. Aquí estamos utilizando el there are. Pero también estamos utilizando la palabra some. There are some, hay algunas, on Pine Street. And is there a laundromat near here? Is there a laundromat near here? I think there is one. There is one across from the shopping center. By the way, there is a barber shop in the shopping center too. A barber shop? Why is she telling him uh, this information about the barber shop? If you can see the image, you can notice that Jack has a long hair. So in that case, she is telling him to cut his hair. But that that is like something extra. Eso es bastante eh, como una información extra de parte de la de la señora decirle ah hay una eh, barbería donde puedes cortarte el cabello. Now we are just going to listen this video that is related to there is there are one any and some uh, as a review of the topic and then we are going to answer the knowledge check that we have on this section that in this case is the three point Four. If you can notice, we just have three knowledge check in this section. So it is kind of easy. So we're going to listen to this information and then we are going to answer the knowledge check. So pay attention to the information. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another session. This time, we'll learn to ask if there is or not a particular place in town. We'll go over prepositions of place, which will help us give directions. In this session, participants will learn how to ask and answer questions with there is, there are, one, any, and some. There is, there are, one, any, some. Is there a laundromat near here? Yes, there is. There's one across from the shopping center. No, there isn't, but there's one next to the library. Are there any grocery stores around here? Yes, there are. There are some nice stores on Pine Street. No, there aren't, but there are some on 3rd Avenue. No, there aren't any around here. Prepositions On Next to Near Close to Across from Opposite In front of In back of Behind, between, on the corner of. If you want to know if there is a place near you, we do it by saying, is there a near here? Of course, the answer will depend on if there is or not. You may answer yes, there is, or no, there isn't. If your answer is yes, there is, you may continue by saying, yes, there is. There is one next to the gas station. Prepositions of place. Let's go over the prepositions by looking at the map. The post office is on Main Street. The gas station is next to the public library. The shopping center is close or near the public library. The telephone booth is across from the gas station. The plaza is in front of the post office. The electronics store is behind or at the back of the post office. The plaza is between First National Bank and the grocery store. The gas station is on the corner of First Avenue. Make sure you practice and understand each preposition of place. Main Street. By looking at the map, you may continue by saying. Okay, one thing that is very important here is that they are talking about also the uh, preposition of places. Um, that is one of these topics that we see a lot of times when we are learning English, but 
it's very, very important that we are familiar with this preposition of places. And if you can see, like, uh, in the conversation that we have between Jack and the lady, uh, they are giving, like, directions of the places in town. And in this case, you need to know in which places are the grocery store, the police station, the uh, gas station, the library, the, the pharmacy, and all of these things. And we are just going to listen one more time the explanation of the places or the preposition um, of places. Uh, but that is just like, um, we can say like a review of this information because we are not going to continue talking about the preposition of places because in that case is um, a topic that is just um, a reminder of the information that we already have with this preposition of places. So in this case, we're just going to listen again this part of the video that is related to the yes, map. Yes, there is. There is one next to the gas station. Prepositions of place. Let's go over the prepositions by looking at the map. The post office is on Main Street. The gas station is next to the public library. The shopping center is close or near the public library. The telephone booth is across from the gas station. The plaza is in front of the post office. The electronics store is behind or at the back of the post office. The plaza is between First National Bank and the grocery store. The gas station is on the corner of First Avenue. Make sure you practice and understand each preposition of place. Okay, that is like the, the last part of the video in which you are like um, seeing in which places are every um, building on the street. I'm just going to add to the document the table with the preposition of places. Voy a agregarles una tabla con las preposiciones del lugar para que ustedes lo tengan también ahí y puedan accesar a esa información para que la vayan practicando y no se les olvide cuáles son las preposiciones del lugar. And now we are going to see what is the knowledge check about. So in this case, we are going to complete a knowledge check 3.4 and you know that this one is related to the map. Está relacionada con el mapa que acabamos de ver en el video. So, uh, take a look at the map, read the question and choose the right place according to the direction given. So, in this case, we have three. We are going to see the map. We are going to read one, two, and three. And then you are going to help me with the answers. Vamos a tratar de leer y dar la respuesta para que los que no han eh, avanzado con este knowledge check puedan hacerlo en este momento. Y para los que ya lo hicieron, very good job. You are doing a great job. But we are going to give like two minutes to read the sentences and to see the map. And then we are going to continue with the other um, statements.
Okay, let's see. Number one, is there a library, hotel, park near here? Yes, there is one. It is on the corner or of Elm Street and Maple Avenue. ¿Qué es lo que está en la esquina de Elm Street and Maple Avenue? A library, a hotel, or a park? Hotel. Hotel. Okay, a hotel. Very good. Next one. Is there a around here? Yes, there is one. It is next to Brian's Grocery Store. ¿Qué es lo que está a la par? Bank, gym, o laundromat? Bank. bank. Okay, a bank. Next one. Is there a near here? Yes, there is. There is one on Main Street behind Parker's Drugstore. ¿Qué es lo que está eh, detrás de Parker's Drugstore? And we have the options. A park, Joyce Gym, and Department Store. Department Store. Okay. Department dep store. Okay, Department Store. Oh, wow, there are a lot of statements. Next one. Is there on a Pine Avenue? No, there isn't, but there is one on First Avenue and Main Street. No hay uh, esta, eh, este lugar en Pine Avenue, pero está en First Avenue and Main Street. A uh, cafe, a uh, gas station, or hotels. Gas station. Okay, the gas station. Gas station. Okay. Are there on Main Street? No, there aren't. They are some nice stores on Pine Street. Y tenemos las opciones. Hotels, public library, and grocery stores. Grocery stores. Grocery store. Okay, grocery store. Uh, number six, is there a near here? Yes, there is. It is between the post office and all days department stores. Está en medio de el post office y all days department store. Gym, shoe store, and grocery store. Gym. Okay, the gym. Next one, is there a on 2nd Avenue? ¿Qué es lo que hay en 2nd Avenue? En este caso, está preguntando si hay algo ahí y dicen que no. No, there isn't. There is one on 1st Avenue across from shopping center, an electronic store, a park, or a bank. Electronic store. Okay, an electronic store. Number eight. And we are almost done. Is there a around here? Yes, there is. There is one on the corner of Main Street and First Avenue. A, a public library, payphone, or a drugstore? Payphone. payphone. Okay, a payphone. And number nine, is there a near here? Yes, there is one next to the gas station. Hotel, cafe, public library. Public library. A public library? Okay. And number 10, that is the last one. Are there any on First Avenue? No, there aren't. There are some on Maple Street. Restaurants, gas station, and grocery stores. Restaurants. Restaurants? Yes. Okay, restaurants. Let's see what is the punctuation for this activity. Let's see. Okay, they are all correct. Very good. Están todas correctas. Para los que no han hecho esta parte, pueden hacer sus screenshots. Pueden ir anotando en este momento, ¿verdad? Cuáles son las respuestas para que puedan irlos haciendo en la plataforma. Remember that eh, 
for this week, if you need to complete section number three, that is this one that we are uh, seeing right now. So you need to complete the three uh, knowledge check that we have on this section number three. There are not a lot of uh, exercises. You have just three and we have completed one. So we just have two more and we are complete with section number three. So in this case, we have the answers here and we are almost done with this session. And we have the last ones and that's it. This is the exercise. So that's why I'm going to add the uh, adverb of frequency to the document because we are seeing um, this kind of exercises in which you need to say uh, what um, buildings are in a specific point of the map. But in this case, we're not going to work like directly with the uh, preposition of places because in this case, it's not necessary to create a statement or to make a lot of exercises related to this topic. Um, in this case, it's just like, um, we can say just to remember this kind of information. So, aquí ya terminamos con el primero de los knowledge checks, solo nos quedan dos. Mañana vamos a continuar con los temas que nos faltan eh, tocar de la plataforma y vamos a tratar de trabajar in the knowledge check 3.9, we are going to complete the knowledge check 3.9. And then we are just going to end the week with the other topics and with the knowledge check uh, 3.11. And we are going to enter the third week. We, vamos a comenzar con la tercera semana and we are just going to have one more week. Uh, okay. Okay, um, for the one that is asking me something related to the work of the platform, um, I'm going to help you right now because it's time to end the session. So give me a moment. Um, we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow on session number three. Remember that I'm going to add the link of the playlist of the videos that we have on YouTube on the document. So you can ask access to the document and you are going to find the link at the beginning of the document. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.